Hi, this is Oscar Beckler, and I'm here to show you how I like to clean up scans of a sketchbook for use on the internet. So here you can see uh, a bunch of images from the last half a sketchbook I finished. I usually scan every time I get midway or to the end of a sketchbook. And you can see that there's a lot of problems with these initial scans. Uh, we're going to be working on this guy, and I picked him because he has a extraordinary amount of eraser marks and ugliness that um, is a bad habit of mine, and usually I don't use erasers anymore, but he was a rare case. But he's also a great case for showing how to clean that stuff up. There's also a lot of notes, and as you can see, uh, he's broken into two images and they're in the wrong direction. The reason for this is that I use a large format sketchbook, 11 by 14, and I have to rotate it when I'm done with it. So. A lot of this is stitching these two images together, um, but you also get these kind of dark marks on the border and stuff like that. So I'm going to show how I prefer to clean all this up. So first off, we're going to take these two images into Photoshop and dump one of them into the other with the uh, move tool, the move tool, and we're just going to be working in this document for the rest of the time. So we have these two layers, one is the background layer, this top one I'm going to set to multiply, and move down, and begin to rotate. I use image, rotate canvas, uh, 90 degrees clockwise, which I have a hotkey for. And now you can see that because this layer is on multiply, we can put the two on top of each other, and then line them up. But very carefully, we can move it around. And that looks pretty close. It's on top of each other. Now that we have used that info to line them up, I can take it off of multiply. I'm using hotkeys to switch between these layer mode transfers. Uh, option shift M sets a layer to multiply. Boop. And option shift N sets it back to normal. Boop. So now that we have these, we can crop the whole thing. There was a lot of notes that I took on this page trying to figure out how alien arms might work if they were three-jointed. I ended up aborting the idea and going with a two-jointed arm like humans have. But to start with, we can crop a lot of that. And I'm actually going to, for composition's sake, crop a little more on that side. And there's still all sorts of problems going on. For one, we have the scan line of where too much light was let in. And as a result, it's too dark. And this is why we lined them up. Because now we can just go in with an eraser, a nice soft eraser. And generally, in one big swipe, cut that out. I'm going to go a little more, just because the bottom layer had better detail. And that's basically what you're trying to do, is get both of these two scans and end up using the one with the best detail. Now I'm just going to merge these. I'm going to use a brush tool, a nice hard brush, select a paper color using Option to get an eyedropper, and just get rid of it. That was a little close to my gun, so I'm going to do it a second time. And you might be thinking to yourself that this creates this hard edge near the paper, but don't worry about it. Uh, although we're just going to be brushing it this way, later on this technique will be helpful for this kind of thing, which is that word bubble is actually um, leftovers from the scan below. Um, and so the way I get my line drawing separated is a great way to get rid of that. But we're just going to use this brush. And to continue, we're going to get rid of this paper border yeah close enough so now we can move on to the main way that I like to clean these up which is a combination of the dodge and burn tool the dodge and burn tools lighten and darken uh, a, a pixel based off of how you set them and what we want is to make our darks darker by which I mean this washed out gray pencil line we want to be 
really strong dark, and our lights are lighter, by which I mean getting all this sketchbook junk, these inks, or these lead smears, the scanning artifacts, all to go away. We're going to start with the burn tool, set it to shadows because we want to make our darks darker, and once again, nice soft brush, I believe. And we can start going over our line work, and as you can see on the gun, it's going to make the... Oops. If we use the burn tool on our gun, it's going to make the stock dark, but it's not going to make the innards as light. So I can just go over all my line work and just generally make all of the line work darker than it originally was. That's looking pretty good. In some cases, this is making all those lead smears a little worse. Once again, I chose a specifically extra messy drawing to show how to extra clean it up. So now we're going to switch over to the dodge tool and set it to highlights. This is set to a lower exposure. I generally prefer to do my darks first because a lot of times you have you know shading that you did lighter and if you dodge first then you're going to destroy that and turn it all into white whereas what you wanted to do was uh, make the line show up more. So with our dodge tool now we can start cleaning up all this hideous mess. And just like that, we have a nice clean line drawing. And you can see that I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, sort of the goal for this is that you want to spend most of your time drawing and very little of your time doing cleanup work. So if you're spending an hour on a drawing, that you meticulously draw, and then you spend an hour just cleaning it up, not even like like adding color or anything, but just cleaning up the line work. That's a total waste of your time. So this is entirely designed around having a process that you can do really fast, and then immediately go back into drawing more. I draw enough that it's more worthwhile to just throw them up on the internet than to paint up the single one that I like. Well, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to darken this top line a little more because I feel like that got washed out a little. And perhaps we can do a little bit of manual cleanup with the brush tool. That looks pretty good to me. Next up, because I'm throwing this up on the internet, um, I'm going to reduce the size. And there's two reasons for this. One is that um, lowering the resolution to 72 dpi is going to make it a smaller image that loads faster on the internet. And secondly, let's say that you did want to work a lot more on this. So maybe you want to color it, or um, ink it, or I don't know, probably color it. Uh, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to color something that is 600 by 700 by 1,000 than it is to color something that is 2,500 by, uh, I don't know, 3,500. And th the way that brushes function, based off of how many pixels are around, also changes pretty dramatically. So using your brush tool on a low resolution image changes very very much from using it on a high resolution image. Uh, so part of the reason I like it is I actually start with the low resolution image when I color, but that's just me. And then if I get to a point where I move forward, 
then I will increase the resolution back up to 300 dpi. But for now, this is pretty much where I want it, so that I can throw it up on my blog, remove it from my mind, and get back to drawing. Pretty fun. Once again, my name is Oscar Beckler. You can find more of my stuff on ogvog.blogspot.com. And I hope that you enjoyed this. That's all. Bye-bye.